media business as we see it today, across the world, has some serious pressure. We have to come together to compete. Uh, otherwise, we, uh, we end up in a very challenging place in the long-term future. And something we consistently say that drives us forward is managing decline is not a business plan. And I think we accepted two years ago that as publishers, we spent 15 years playing in the digital space, but not aggressively, aggressively addressing the issues that we saw. The evolution of programmatic, the data opportunities that we see, and the partnership opportunities we see with each other suddenly created an opportunity for us to take a front foot against the global giants, or certainly to create a third credible player, as we say in the marketplace. So the burning platform was we were losing revenues fast in the digital space, but we needed to get some more share. So I'll just give you some context around what that means today. And these numbers, are, you know, there are lots of versions of it, but essentially the, uh, the theme remains true. Overall, the, the advertising landscape globally is pretty positive. We're seeing great, global growth in advertising spend. That's really positive. Um, when we look at where it's happening from, we see it in the digital space. We see a slowing digital spend growth, but what we see is year on year, de really decent growth, and the overall advertising expenditure growth. So that, that, that's really positive, that's exciting for us. Um, our roadmap is driven by the, the stats on the right here, which says that growth is happening out of mobile. But desktop is actually stagnating pretty much, so all of our roadmap is focused in on those, those sort of mobile platforms. Um, and by the end of the year, we're at about 52% share of, uh, of all advertising spend. So again, we go, okay, well, we can compete in this. This is an interesting space. And until you look at the next slide, where, where we, we realize that of the $26 billion incremental spend in digital last year, $23.3 billion of it went to search and social. So who are those two people? So that leaves all of us in this room, globally, competing for $3.2 billion. Um, that's not going to keep our journalists writing stories. It's not going to keep us creating great local programming. So this is the nub of how Capex was created, where we really focused in on these three very important areas. Firstly, how do we take a front foot on scale? The scale to compete with the big guys. See as many people every day as those big guys. The second area we said, with how do we create as good a data proposition, or at least a very credible data proposition that allows our targeting and advertiser opportunities to compete? And the third area we looked at was innovation. We, and you guys will be very used to this, in uh, traditional media organizations, we, we sort of sat there and said, we've got legacy structures, we're bureaucratic, we can't make decisions, we move slowly, we have a lot of internal politics. So we said, solid, we cannot do it internally. We have to create something new. So I'll take you on the journey we've been through. So that was the focus of everything we say is managing decline is not a business plan. We have to be moving forward. We have to be innovating. We have to be positive. We, I can't tell you how many opportunities there are for us to say no to stuff. So that's to say, actually, We'll lose a little bit of revenue here, and we can't accept that. Because if we hadn't accepted the risk, we wouldn't have seen the opportunity. Why did we create Capex, and why do we believe it would be a success? Well, actually, the, the cause is much bigger than us. The first thing we believe is that premium has a value beyond a blog site, beyond the pool of internet rubbish that's out there that we can advertise on. So we thought that local resonates for advertising audiences. So firstly, this is a local app, though you don't know. You, who knows Sunny Bill Williams? Right, okay, legend. Um, so what we, what we saw is that local content was most viewed of all the programs in New Zealand and all the content read on all our websites. Local content was that that had the most engaged audiences and was most viewed every single year. And the second thing we noticed is that engagement turned into great performance for advertisers, and advertisers wanted to be associated with that local content. So we had something in this premium environment that the big players didn't have. We had engagement and relevancy that resonated with local advertisers and local audiences. So local is important. 
The second thing we said, and this is important for us as a um, court, is that a, a strong fourth estate is essential for society. It's a strong local press organization. It's really important to hold governments, to hold businesses, and to hold the nation to account. So actually, we need to protect that as an industry. And something we've gone out very hard to advertise us with, but they need to be thinking about how they engage with and, and are actually socially responsible with their advertising spend. And the third area, which we're all very aware of, is that it's not just the media dollars at risk. The move of governments are obviously, and often, the largest spenders, or one of the largest spenders in each local market. And uh, when they're spending in Facebook and Google, not backing their local providers, they're actually helping the decline of their own tax revenue. So that's a really interesting position to take over and above our pure proposition. So that's why we focus on creating CAPEX. So where are we today? See, how does the landscape look? The first thing is that we've got continuity in our businesses. We've got traditional media being the most highly trusted. In times of big news events, we see people flooding to premium news sites, and that's because they trust more than ever those, um, those journalistic opinions. TV is the main news source, so it continues to be a massive vehicle. Maybe not long term in the future, but today TV is the place people go when there is a huge amount of news in, uh, in the evenings. And print generates the most stories. So all those stories being read in Facebook are often generated by our journalists. So if we want to continue people to engage with our stories, it needs to back <coughs> our business. The challenges we have in these businesses is that we have old revenue models, so we need to invent new models. And the second thing is we have this legacy culture, a lot of bureaucracy. So how do we address this? Well, we actually all came together and created KPEX on those three areas. First, scale. So now within our platform, we see 80% of New Zealand every single day. Secondly, we see, I think actually Andy just showed us an 11 million number, so maybe it's gone up. But we see 9 million devices in the, in the platform. We have loads of data points, so that's fantastic. And the third area is that we created a business outside of our current businesses that allowed us to invest in innovation. It allowed us to create new products that we can take to market without needing to ask any permission and without any politics. We've got complete authority just to grow with the ball. So this is who we've got in the, um, in the organization. We now have the four founding partners. So the first two, the two biggest broadcasters within New Zealand, they're sort of the, um, the big TV stations, and the bottom two are, uh, sorry, the next two shareholders are the big press organizations. And between them, those four also own every single radio station in New Zealand. So really, that is the majority of the whole of New Zealand uh, media scene outside Facebook and Google. And what we have here is some of the key local partners, and very interestingly, some key data partners, like homes.co.nz, a big real estate site that allows us to create amazing audiences to watch across the whole of the platform. Out of that, what we, we saw, and we, we, we take it to market quite quickly, is that we have scale. So you see in this console report here, the three biggest platforms in New Zealand, the first being Google, the second being KFX, and the third being Facebook. So clients like that. They like to see that actually they've got a big platform to play with, big reach in the marketplace. The second thing we have is strong relevance. We have really good targeting audiences that we build as part of our PMPs. Um, we've always been really focused on being a broadcast channel, so we haven't created very, very niche audiences. So targeting at scale has been one of our mantras to make sure we maintain both the reach and obviously the, um, the budget. The third area is the impact piece. We've innovated as fast as we can in that mobile space to create impact and create new platforms and products for the marketplace. Interesting. Um, <laughs> okay, I'll go back again. Okay, so what's happened in those in the last 24 months? Simply put, <laughs> <and that's, laughs> okay, go back one. That's it. That's it. We're happy there. Um, okay, what what we found is that we've actually month on month grown. Two years in, yesterday, was our biggest month ever in 
October, and then we'll be able to get something again. We continue to grow month on month. 70% of our revenue now comes out of PMPs, rather than the open marketplace, which means people are actively choosing Capex in the market because of the quality scores, because of the audiences we build. What does that do? That allows us to drive yield from our inventory. The next thing we see is that we've got about 30% of the RTV market share now. So we've taken 30% of share out of Google, almost directly, which is um, which has been really powerful. We see over a billion impressions per month in the exchange for a benchmark about 12 months ago. That was 200 million. Um, so we see about you know very very con sort of continued growth in inventory, and that's because we have throughout the whole process not only turned up revenue but turned up yield give each media owner confidence that we are growing their business responsibly and taking their impressions seriously that they give to us. Um, and we've developed in this time a data product, as we'll, uh, we'll touch on in a minute. We've developed our own native ad server. So we saw that mobile was important. We saw that Google was slow coming to market with their native product. So we developed our own really quickly. We integrated it with, uh, with our sites and had a native standard across the marketplace before the big guys got in there. And the last area which has been the game changer, which is now one of our top 10 advertising spenders every month, is our self-service platform. So you can buy, if I'm a small car dealership in a small town in New Zealand, I can buy Facebook really easily, and I can buy Google really easily. So why can't they buy Capex really easily? So what we did is we developed our own self-service platform. We essentially took a DSP, we built an interface on top of it, we allowed it to take credit card transactions. We just simplified the whole programmatic space to allow them to, um, to, to target our inventory, premium inventory, in a, um, in a uh, very simple way. So um, loads of innovation, loads of growth, and we continue to, to run really fast. So this is, the, this is the journey we've been on, and we're about to launch Capex 2.0, which is our second phase. Um, we're moving, moving our SSP, primary SSP platform, and we're um, we're running really fast into the next uh, the next stage. So so far, what we've done is we started very simply, proving the concept of the premium inventory works harder than non-premium inventory. Then we overlaid data, and then we developed our data proposition in a serious way with Otomi, and making sure that we got uh, enough new audiences in the marketplace to drive our credibility. We drove our native product, developed that, launched it at the start of this year. Brand safety has been a massive opportunity and a massive threat for our business. So um, the threat is that actually people with URL targets rather than choose the consortium. So that's the risk. We haven't seen that materialize. What we've seen is people jump into the, um, into the exchange and the quality overall gives them volume that they need. Um, we've launched impact and viewability packages so that people can pick and choose what industry they want to hit to drive their in particular their specific metrics depending on where in the funnel their activity is sitting, whether it's high impact launch activity or it's very targeted data direct response activity. Um, we've launched our self-service platform. And then coming up next will be our data exchange. So we believe we're going to leverage the brand and the premium media owners and all of our collective data to create an exchange and then create a managed service proposition to allow us to make the buying process more efficient than it ever be directly um, or via an agency. So that'll, um, that'll service that sort of middle tier of uh, clients who are currently um, not being represented. And then where do we go from here? We have a, um, a strong spectrum of, uh, of opportunity um, in, in two different areas. First, we're extending our, our current partnerships. So we are looking at three layers of KPEX going forward. Firstly, the premium publishers we have now. The second layer will be KPEX International, which will be partnering with you guys, hopefully, taking New Zealand eyeballs and creating a premium pool of inventory across the world for, um, for, for the New Zealand eyeballs, um, pushing hard into video space, and then moving fast into cross media to leverage that unique access to that inventory um, that we have at the moment. We will move um, into a much more customized data proposition, um, partnering with the, the guys at Bottomy, into the exchange, and then creating more of that managed service that I just touched upon. So six quick principles in terms of what, what has driven our success. If you're a publisher and thinking about this, this model, 
Firstly, clarity and authority. That's actually about saying, this is the role of KPEX, which is real-time bidding, no um, guaranteed activity, all guaranteed is sold by the user and themselves, and all RTB comes to KPEX exclusively. So that's the second principle. No backdoors to our inventory. You can't have five people selling the same inventory, because what happens is you just have a race at the bottom in terms of people trying to chase the revenue. So exclusivity is a foundation. Independence. How many publishers have tried to set up with a consortium based with representatives from each of those businesses based inside those businesses? It needs to be an independent business. I was telling you guys yesterday, one of our, one of our sort of things that we did is we got a Google Maps site up and we plotted every single location of all the offices of KPEX partners and in there we, we cross-referenced it and we put our office right in the middle. So we were never showing any favoritism to any media and that's really important, you know? We actually were independent, we were run fast, but we were fair. Everybody in KPEX is on the same deal no matter how big they are. No commercial preference to anybody. We have a team structure to innovate and we, um, we partner with the best. We keep our platform partners really simple. We partner with as few people as possible, but make sure they are absolutely the best at what they do. And simplicity. It's so easy to make this area complex. Buyers don't want to. You want to make it easy to buy. You want to make it easy to understand. We don't want to talk about programmatic. We want to talk about quality of the tree and quality items. So that's uh, that be something we'd really be challenged with. Trying to keep our proposition simple going forward. But it's not all being um, it's not all being <coughs> calm waters. So some of the quick challenges we face, and this is sort of I guess as we start to wrap up, the technology is immature in this space. We have big expectations of technology. It often doesn't stack. So the, the things we've learned about technology, simplicity is key. Don't get too many people involved. Ideally, that use a stack. Shiny is often shit. Follow fast. Okay. The we have a new rule which we reinvented about six months ago, which which was if it doesn't exist, if it, if it doesn't exist today, it doesn't exist tomorrow. So anybody selling you something that doesn't actually exist, we turn away. We have a rule, follow fast. We want to be second, not first. We're a bit sick of being first. We have to ask and invent everything, and then we have to work with technology people to actually make it solve. So follow fast, don't always go first. Um, specialists are really important. But they challenge that simplicity, so there's got to be incredible value being offered by somebody who's outside of your core technology partner. Um, direct sales teams often see us as a threat. So we have we face two years of people selling against us, and um, we're, we're really focused on making sure that we actually um, bring people on that journey with us. We spend half our time selling to the market, and the other half selling to our inventory providers to explain to them the journey that we're on. And that first slide where Google and Facebook are taking the majority of money, not less. So bringing everyone on the journey and educating the market is really, really um, important. And this final learning that we've got here and challenge is there is there's no such thing as enough revenue. We've never had a month that everyone's been happy. And the reason is we cannot make enough money for the core consortium as a whole to absolutely be satisfied that we're taking the share. So we have to be continually dissatisfied with what we're achieving, and we have to continually improve and innovate to take a larger share on them. And so far, that's worked out pretty well. And lastly, where, where are we going into the future? And this is something that's a real passion project for me, and something that you know, I think should, be, should all be focused on, which is that global consortium model. The, the, I call it the co-ops co-op. So the more of these co-ops that we can create around the world, the more inventory we can all sell within our own marketplaces at a higher value, with better and higher quality data attached to it. So our future is a global consortium. And so my ask to you guys is phone me, email me, whatever, generally you make contact. We'll share whatever we can from our shareholders' agreements through to our product roadmaps, through to the so I guess how we look, how we sort of solve it in the marketplace.
to help everybody get up to speed because we have a vested interest in having a single global marketplace of premium inventory that pulls the quality inventory away from the crappy inventory. So, um, yeah, please, please call us, get in touch, and, um, and join us on the journey. It's been a bit exciting one so far.